Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we'll start discussing on the Heck reaction stereochemistry or stereoselectivity. We were discussing in the last class, we have seen how the syn addition and syn elimination is controlling the regioselectivity as well as the stereoselectivity of the Heck product. We have seen if we are starting from the syn or the cis substituted olefin after the product formation those two substituent where we are starting from those substituents will be diagonally opposite to each other we have seen about that. Let us look at some of the real example to feel the stereoselectivity during the Heck reactions. So, we will first of all discuss some of these aryl halide reacting with olefin. So, we are taking a aryl bromide along with CO2 Me okay. electron withdrawing or electron deficient one. Now, what would be the product formation from this reaction? Well, I think by now you should be able to predict it CO2 Me on this side, the phenyl substituent will be on the same side, phenyl and CO2 Me were opposite to each other, now they should be on the same side and then your aryl group should come into picture for this sort of reaction. Right? Similarly, so what we have seen now? We have aryl bromide adding to the less substituted olefinic side and the substituent at that side is going to be the other way around with respect to the alpha side. So, that is all the stereochemistry about. Let us look at some more example of this type of reaction. We have the same let us say cyano with no, similar substrate, it will again give the similar type of product where cyano and phenyl now are with same with respect to each other. We can have some more substituent in the process. Okay. Let us look at the bromide which is substituted at the ortho position. Well, is the pattern is going to be different? Hopefully not because again the syn elimination or beta hydride elimination requirement is the syn geometry between the living group and the uh, and the palladium center and therefore, once again they will be giving the same product as one would expect the phenyl and CO2 Me should be on the same side and the aryl incoming aryl group can be on the other side the substituent at this ortho position which is not hampering too much of the selectivity. So, this is giving the selectivity 25 to 1 if we are using palladium acetate, tetrabutyl ammonium chloride and dicyclohexyl methyl amine as a base. Now, this, this is of course, um, reported by Buckwald in 1999. If you are taking aryl bromide okay, or phenyl bromide during this reaction, what we get? is um, you know 12 to 1 selectivity and in this case selectivity is thermodynamic control. Okay. We are taking the other one what we get is 12 to 1 selectivity okay, with respect to the product formation, but in this case you see the other way around the same product we are getting, but starting with the it, this uh, substituent at at this side it is it is not rotating on the other side phenyl is actually coming and adding from this side. So, the selectivity in this case is thermodynamic in nature okay. and that, that is by Koenig T L this is T L you can refer to 1999 40 
0.2101. Okay, that is interesting. Now, we'll, uh, with respect to that, we will of course, as you can see, this is always not going to be the very strict rule depending on the thermodynamic factor also one need to look at the product formation carefully. But overall this rules remains very simple the same similar side substituent um, you know goes diagonally opposite during the Heck reaction. Let us look at one more example with the heterocycle because the Heck reaction is widely used reaction. It is tolerant to a variety of functional group ester, ketone, you know, um, nitrile, acid, everything almost every subst you know every uh, functional group can be tolerated under the Heck condition which is a relatively milder condition for this sort of um, you know carbon carbon bond formation reaction. So, it is quite general and co applicable for a wide variety of substrate. Let us look at one example where heterocycle is involved and similarly di substituted olefin is reacted for this purpose. With a heterocycle such as indole, one would say that usually the reaction gets perturbed because the heterocycle uh, heteroatom are problematic usually for any you know metal containing reaction, but Heck reaction is such a mild one and such a beautiful reaction that it works in presence of of course, this is catalytic amount of palladium acetate orthotolyl phosphine and triethyl amine as a base and acetonitrile as a solvent at 115 degree C, we do get this product formation where N benzyl of course, is retained and then over here you see methyl and CO2 Me are trans to each other during the product formation methyl and CO2 Me are cis to each other. So, what else you have seen? So, this is the site where this aryl group is getting in this is the not that side because electron withdrawing group at this center. So, the aryl group is joining here whether methyl will be this side with or it will be on the other side of course, as you see the methyl is now at the same side as CO2 Me. So, during the uh, you know syn elimination product formation requirement you get this product. Well, that is quite interesting to know overall what we have then seen that during these processes to summarize again if you have olefin less substituted position gets substituted the that position should be far from the electron withdrawing group because that that is then is going to be more uh, electron deficient in nature if the alpha position is having the electron withdrawing group the substituent will, will come at the beta position okay that's another thing uh, and if the substituent at alpha and beta position are the are on the same side, they will go opposite side to each other um, during the syn elimination uh, and the Heck product formation. We have seen that functional group tolerance is beautiful, it works almost for every different substituent that you can think of, even various heterocycles works out that is the uh, you know that is the scope and the tolerance of, of this method is quite broad in general. The problem still exists in this Heck reaction and those are uh, incorporation of the aryl halide. Well, how do you incorporate aryl chloride into the reaction that remained one of the problems over long time. Once again professor Greg Fuge group has solved this problem of incorporation of aryl halide aryl chlorides in particular while taking tri uh, you know tri tertiary butyl phosphine as a ligand. Now, aryl chloride can be incorporated during this reaction. Well, that is that is a welcome change for this reaction. So, people are still working on developing the existing issues or sorting out the existing issues in the Heck reaction. Well, I think we can keep on discussing more and more on this perhaps the healthier way to do it would be you keep studying from the literature and there are plenty of references, there are plenty of reviews out there. So, you can study more about that otherwise uh, we can move on for now and then discuss some other carbon heteroatom bond formation reaction which are equally important if not more compared to carbon carbon bond formation reactions. 
Let us look at the one of the most prominent carbon heteroatom bond forming reaction and that is known as palladium catalyzed uh, reaction and named after Hartwig and Buckwald. And so, Buckwald Hartwig uh, coupling reaction for, for the palladium catalyzed carbon nitrogen bond formation reactions. Okay. Let us look at that. Well, uh, I, I can again actually while introducing this topic, we must also uh, look at few other, uh, other issues. I think we were discussing in the last class that we should discuss little bit of the enantioselectivity during the Heck reaction. Well, before moving into the uh, buckwald hartwig coupling reaction, let us look at the enantioselective uh, Heck reaction, which is again a various, um, you know, various uh, application oriented area and we have seen tremendous growth in this area as well and industry loves this area uh, particularly the asymmetric Heck reactions. So, asymmetric Heck coupling reaction. Well, the one example we would like to discuss with the Falz ligand where uh, let us say the substituent is such that it is a cyclic one and we have uh, pH OTF as the coupling partner, okay. OTF is nothing but OSO2 CF3 okay. and in, during this process if you are taking palladium 0 ligand complex and amine as a base NR3 amine as a base, what you get from these processes is quite also interesting. This is also gives you an idea that shifting can be possible, shifting of the double bond can be possible and you have a phenyl group at this position below the plane. This is a 92 percent E and 70 percent yield reaction and the ligand that is required for this reaction is the Falz reagent or Falz ligand that is popularly known as this oxazoline based phosphine amine ligand that is quite easy to prepare though. Uh, although it looks little complicated, but the corresponding aldehyde and amino alcohol would give this starting material quite very easily. This tri triaryl substituted aldehyde one can give this starting material very easily. In this reaction what you have seen, it is a cyclic internal olefin we have started with. There is a alpha position alpha carbon with respect to olefin which is having two uh, which is having CH2 unit. Now, during this during this Heck reaction what we have seen uh, that that is alpha position CH2 now is participating during the reaction to get the double bond shifted at that alpha carbon and with respect to the olefin carbon center now a new stereo center is getting generated where ligand the Falz ligand is controlling the stereochemistry at that side and we have seen by utilizing this reaction we have we can get a very good yield and high enantioselectivity for this reaction. You can draw I am sure you can draw the mechanism of this reaction quite easily. Once again this triplet will oxidatively add olefin will coordinate and then beta migratory insertion will happen and subsequently during the beta hydride elimination it is the other position that uh, that gets the double bond not the more substituted position and that is controlled by the heteroatom present in the molecule. So, that sort of substituent that sort of rolling over of the double bond can happen if you have a heteroatom as the part of the uh, part of the ring or part of the uh, molecule. Okay. That you also one should look out for and this by doing this then we get an opportunity to create a stereo center and the asymmetric reversion of this reaction can be developed quite easily as you have seen for this particular case. We have seen the Falz ligand is quite suitable for these cases. We also can get some sort of rollover reaction some sort of uh, you know oxidative addition beta migratory insertion and then Heck type of product formation uh, shortly with more example. With two more example we will conclude on the Heck reaction today and then we, the next topic will of discussion should be palladium catalyzed carbon nitrogen bond formation also known as Buckwald Hartwig coupling reactions. Let us look at two more example with the Heck reactions. So, the another substrate that 
we, it's quite interesting is the iodo bromo, both iodo and bromo are present and selectively only one substituent and that is the iodo since oxidative addition is faster over there. Once again the here palladium catalyte, palladium zero catalyte, trithyl amine and you can see the final product is even bromo containing or bromo substituted one that is quite interesting. Other substituent that is quite also very interesting for our purpose is let us say if you have a X or you know substituted halogen substituted one and intramolecular alkyne is placed beautifully right in front of it and in presence of palladium triphenyl phosphine or tetrakis let us say we can have triethyl amine as a base and this CO2 Me as a substituent. What we can come over then um, is a product formation where you see that olefination occurring at the terminal state and that is quite interesting, right. What is happening here? You have a substrate aryl halide along with that ortho substituted you have alkyne that is appended to it. Now, this aryl halide will undergo the oxidative addition and then beta migrated insertion occurs into the alkyne that gives rise to the cyclic product formation and then the alkenyl halide is right outside that cyclic ring and from there on then the palladium intermediate will interact with the olefin methyl acrylate in this case to give you the further substituted intermediate and the product formation right. So, oxidative addition roll over uh, you know beta migratory insertion and then the palladium which is rolled over at that alkyne uh, the methyl substituted carbon position that then can react with the olefin just like Heck reaction, but in a little elaborate sense to give you you know cyclic product formation in this particular case. So, that is again one very interesting uh, point. Also another thing you have perhaps noticed that we are using triethyl amine as a base is used for a number of Heck reaction that is giving rise to a condition which is very mild right. Now, of course, as we were discussing that initial reagent that we use for this any palladium catalyzed or almost all palladium catalyzed reaction for this carbon carbon bond formation cross coupling type of reaction is the palladium 2 plus. So, how palladium 2 plus is giving rise to palladium 0 in presence of base such as triethyl amine is also a very interesting topic. And almost clear understanding is there at this point which suggests that triethyl amine participate into the reaction to give the palladium 2 to palladium 0 catalytic cycle or the activation of palladium 2 to form the palladium 0. Let us look at the mechanism by which triethyl amine is participating for example, to give you the palladium 0 complex from palladium 2. Okay. Most common catalyst. of course, is palladium acetate, right. So, palladium acetate, how palladium acetate is converted to, so this is in palladium 2 plus condition and triethyl amine is coming into the picture. So, first question that comes into mind that is it going to bind, of course, this has lone pair, nitrogen has lone pair, it will bind and the ethyl group let us draw it more of like that. You have alpha beta beta hydride elimination is possible from here giving rise to an intermediate where palladium 2 um, and then diethyl I mean this cationic intermediate is from this cationic and anionic intermediate form along with the hydride over there and then overall we will get the acetate coming into the picture then the reductive elimination uh, can gives rise to the palladium 0 formation because acetic acid and other things will give you the other side products from this reaction overall then this will be giving you the palladium 0. So, palladium 2 acetate reacts with triethyl amine and then this triethyl amine coordination and the beta position beta hydride elimination gives rise to the palladium to hydride type of intermediate and from there uh, of course, acetic acid will go out and acetate will react with that um, triethyl amine to give you overall palladium 0. 
So as I was trying to tell you that earlier, uh, we also have previously seen how palladium 2 to palladium 0 formation is occurring in, in organolithium reagent or Grignard reagent. Similarly, the almost in every palladium catalyzed carbon carbon bond formation, we have one way or the other palladium 2 to palladium 0 formation. Okay. Therefore, to summarize this Heck reaction then we have seen quite a few examples with, uh, with demonstration of the regio and the stereo selectivity of the Heck reaction. We have seen um, that Heck reaction can be made asymmetric where we can have the rollover little bit and the alpha position as long as it is connected with the hetero atom that lone pair will help um, the rollover of the palladium so, or so to speak the beta hydride elimination instead of the desired position what one would expect the other alpha position if it is having alpha CH bond then that CH can give uh, the double bond generation during the beta hydride elimination. During the beta hydride elimination also we have learned that the beta hydride elimination can only occur if the palladium and the hydride are seen to each other. In order to gain that sometime what we do see is the rotation of the substituent that might will be uh, uh, might will be there in the disubstituted olefin and therefore disubstituted olefins that substitution pattern or substitution relative positioning can be changing more often than not. We have also seen the stereochemistry and the regiochemistry is controlled by the substituent on the olefin. If an electron withdrawing substituent is present that will give rise to the substitution at the other carbon center of the olefin because that is the more electrophilic center in nature. We have seen all these you go through more and more example I am sure you will be able to appreciate the far reach strategy that, that one have one can design during a complex molecule synthesis by utilizing the uh, Heck reaction. So, I hope you will be keep studying on this we if required we can take um, and discuss more take more question or uh, discuss more about it in due course otherwise let us move on to the next topic that is palladium catalyzed carbon nitrogen bond formation. Well, so far what we have discussed is all involving carbon carbon bond formation. Another wide area of research is the carbon heteroatom bond formation using the organometallic reagent. This is a widely studied area because number of drug molecules and pharmaceuticals or in industrial relevant compounds or even for the academic purpose we need a carbon heteroatom bond formation carbon nitrogen carbon oxygen carbon sulfur carbon phosphorus and so on bond formation we need to have now the the reaction that has revolutionized this area is known as buckwald hartwig coupling or palladium catalyzed carbon nitrogen bond formation in these cases we have aryl halide or even alkenyl halide and then react it with amine the amine could be primary amine or secondary amine of course tertiary amine does not come into picture. So, primary or secondary amine can be reacted with aryl halide for example to give you the aryl amine or aryl substituted amine. Now of course, there are quite a quite a lot of challenges in these areas whether you to take the primary amine or the secondary amine whether to take the completely aliphatic primary amine or completely aromatic primary amine, whether to take disubstituted amine or that secondary amine aliphatic or the aromatic one or aliphatic aromatic combination. So, all these makes it all these issues of amine and the you know the variety of amine that we can have makes this process very interesting. Similarly, for the alcohol we can have phenol or aliphatic alcohol. The aliphatic alcohol is uh, having alpha substituted one and beta substituted one. So, overall we can have 
plenty of different issues that to discuss during this palladium catalyzed carbon heteroatom bond formation reaction. Both the carbon nitrogen and carbon oxygen or even carbon sulfur bond formation reaction are usually broadly referred to as this buckwald hartwig coupling reaction. We can have alpha substituted alcohol, beta substituted alcohol, all these can react actually quite differently. As one could imagine the mechanistic things will be similar right as that of let us say for example, Heck reaction we will have aryl halide as you are saying aryl halide will oxidatively add to palladium to give the um, give the uh, palladium 2 intermediate from there on amine or the alcohol coordination and then deprotonation in this case unlike the Heck reaction deprotonation and then insertion uh, will give you the product like intermediate from from where you can you can dissociate the product from the palladium intermediate to give to generate the palladium 0 and the organic molecule. Now, we will we'll discuss more on that in the subsequent class. So, I guess we, we will be discussing step wise different issues with this carbon heteroatom bond formation reaction and also about the ligand designing overall into these carbon carbon and carbon heteroatom bond formation reaction, why it is important and what has been really done to solve this existing problem of ligand designing as I was discussing oxidative addition and reductive elimination are completely opposite with each respect to each other. Therefore, ligand design can be very, very complicated issues for this metal catalyzed reaction. What are the aspects of ligand design that we need to look at and how researchers have come up with different ideas and some of them has revolutionized and changed the way uh, these palladium catalyzed reactions in general are done. Not only that those ideas can now be in incorporated not only on palladium, but with variety of other metal where, where any um, this new bond formation can be taking place. With those discussion we will come to the next class, till then um, skip re reading if you have any queries feel free to contact the TH or to me directly. Thank you, bye bye.